Dennis Waxon, a 33-year-old Lille resident confessed, in July 1999, to the kidnapping, rape and murder of three girls aged 9, 6 and 4, committed and accompanied by acts of barbarism, in 1985, 1990 and 1992, in Lille. The child had been abducted, raped and killed six days earlier. Seven years later, on July 13, 1999, Dennis Waxon, confused by DNA analyzes, admitted the facts. That same evening, he also confessed before the examining magistrate to the rape and murder of Kathy Moncho, 9, and Natalie Horau, 6, committed in October 1990 and November 1985. He had been arrested thanks to the courage of another little girl. On January 6, 1999, Dennis Waxon kidnapped little Wendy, 6, near her home, and took her to an abandoned factory in Lille Fives. He had threatened Wendy with an electric baton to ensure her submission. And he added, I am warning you, I have already killed little girls. He then raped the girl, but she managed to escape while Waxon was getting dressed. Let's get into this interesting case. Dennis's mother, Marie, John, was hardworking and decent. On the other hand, his father was very strict, interested only in trifecta and games of chance, and never talked to Dennis or his other four children. His family was modest, and his parents often left him in silence and isolation without tenderness and affection. His older brother Dominique was his only confident defender and sole source of sweetness. In 1985, Dominique left the family home, and Dennis fell into depression every day. He would walk miles in the streets alone for hours. On July 29, 1992, the body of little Nadia Tabib, 4, was discovered in a wasteland in Ranchin, near Lille. He obtained a professional degree in carpentry, later doing his military service in Germany. During military leave, he had a relationship with an older woman. Their relationship ended in the late summer of 1990, when he finished his military service. Eventually, he got married and lived in Mulan. The pair did not have a child, and he called his wife mom. He was described as a good husband, helpful and charming. He got a job in the filling station of Aachen in Villanova Desk. He was punctual and conscientious but unpredictable. One night he shot all the bullets from the alarm gun charger onto an eyeglass thief. He was fired for threatening to set the station on fire because he was annoyed by a remark made to him by his boss. On November 22, 1985, at the end of the afternoon at the Biscuit District in Lille, seven-year-old Natalie Hoare was sent by her mother to buy cigarettes and bread. Waxon approached her and offered to show her his shack. She followed him to a wasteland in the root of Phobos, Paris, where he raped her, tried to strangle her with a candy necklace she wore around her neck before stabbing her twice in the heart. Natalie's mother reported her disappearance to the police at 6.30 p.m. Her body, the lower part of which was bare, was found in the evening in a bush by two policemen near her. They found the packets of cigarettes she had bought in the shopping list on which the shopkeeper had written a message for her mother. A trace of sperm was found, but the rain had altered it, making it impossible to establish a genetic profile on October 8, 1990, in the house till it's in ways. Kathy Monshow 9 years old was playing in the garden of her residence at 8 p.m. Roger called her to come back home. Waxon then approached her and offered to buy candy, taking her to an old football field that turned into a wasteland on Victor Hugo Boulevard. He raped, then stabbed her 14 times because she tried to escape. When Kathy did not return, her father and older sister Valerie looked for her, and then her father informed the police. At 9 p.m. a day later, a man walking his dog found Kathy's naked body on July 23, 1992. At the end of the afternoon on Georges Mandel Street in Moulin Nahia, the bib four years old played with other children at the foot of the HLN building where her grandmother, Miriam, lived on the ground floor. Her parents had just separated, Waxon went in the direction of Rankin. He carried her in his arms, and since she was calm, her family supposed that he was an uncle of Nigeria. Anissa Nigeria's aren't pursued in the streets, but she stumbled and lost sight of him. Nigeria's mother, Nina, went out looking for her with the other family members' help. She reported the police's abduction, and Anissa described the kidnapper's outfit, red t-shirt sneakers with white stripes and white sweatpants with red stripes. A facial composite was produced and broadcast. 
Meanwhile, Waxen was raped in gear, stabbing her in the neck and choking her with a plastic bag. On July 29, 1992. At the beginning of the afternoon, in a vacant lot in Rankin, three boys found Nigeria's body lying on its right side under a tarpaulin in a hole between the suburbs. Her clothes were folded beneath her. The medical examiner stated that she had been killed a few hours after her abduction on one of her clothes, traces of sperm were found. And this allowed the authorities to establish a DNA profile. The investigators were certain that the perpetrator lived in Lille or its suburbs so well as to know the deserted places and move so quickly and discreetly when abducting a child. In 1998, Waxen was arrested for trying to steal cutlery from a store with his wife. On January 6, 1999, on Jean Gares Street in Moulin, six-year-old Wendy, her older sister, and her brother collected yellow coins for food. The residence where they lived. After a while, her brother and sister decided to separate to collect more efficiently. Wendy remained alone, asking people who came in and out of the residence's entrance while her brother and sister collected in the residence's door-to-door. -door. Wendy asked Waxen, which was walking down the street. He said he had none on him, however, he had some at home. After checking that no one else was around, he took Wendy by hand and pulled her to the side of the street. They walked for miles each time Wendy asked him if it is still far from home. Waxen replied that they have almost arrived. He told her that it is a shortcut and took them to an abandoned factory in fives. She resisted when he began to undress her, but he threatened her with an electric baton saying that he had already killed other little girls. She no longer protested letting Waxen undress and rape her. She calmly put her clothes back on. When he finished, she left, but Waxen followed her telling her that he was watching and coming back if she spoke to the police. She started walking towards her home and found out that she had lost her way. A motorist saw her crying and carried her to the police station. Wendy's good memory made it possible to create a facial composite. She said that he was wearing a green jacket with a triangle in the back. A few days later, while Wendy was looking out the window, she saw Waxen on the sidewalk in front of the residence looking at her and smiling. The police informed a few days later, monitored the building entrance. They noticed a man matching the facial composite. They questioned him, and he claimed that he is a marginal resident in a home near Wendy. The authorities printed on one sheet, six anthropology trick photos of the suspect, and five men resemble him. They went to Wendy's house and asked her if she could recognize her attacker. Among the pictures, she referred to Wax Scene's photo who was not considered a suspect intel located. The investigators asked her again and said it's him for them. The Wax Scene was just a small shoplifter, and without a confession, they could not prosecute him. On January 20, 1999, Waxen went to the interrogation. He was very nervous. The inspectors were impressed by the resemblance to the facial composite. They barely told him why his summoning when he confessed that it is him, then refused to speak further. When he was lined up behind the beam splitter, Wendy formally recognized him. During the search of Wax Scene's home, the police found in his room the jacket corresponding to Wendy's description. In a pocket of the jacket, authorities found a police baton. On January 28, 1999, Waxen was indicted for rape and unlawful defilement of children under 15. The DNA profile was compared to that of Nigeria. The Burbs aggressor resulting in an identical match. On July 12, 1999, Waxen was indicted for kidnapping, followed by death and rape, accompanied by acts of torture and barbarity on Nigeria. He was extracted from his cell and questioned while in custody. He admitted to having raped, strangled, and suffocated Nigeria. He refused to sign his confession and speak further. He declared that he wanted to see the investigating judge and tell him about the murders of the three girls. On July 13, 1999, in Christoph's office, in Grain, the investigating judge, Waxen admitted to murdering Nigeria, Kathy, Moncho, and Natalie Hall. He claimed to have done this to avenge a rape of which he was the victim when he was 12 years old in a cabin in the woods by a homeless man, and that he drank alcohol before committing rape on July 20, 1999. He was indicted for kidnapping, followed by death and rape preceded by or followed by torture or acts of barbarity on Natalie and Kathy. On July 20, 1999, 
Waxon wrote a letter to the investigating judge in which he confirmed the confessions made in the office by describing the crimes. More precisely, he claimed to have killed the girls for that. Oh my god, I can't believe this guy. Seriously. Okay. So, they won't give birth to a monster like the one who raped them. He confessed to having committed three more rapes on girls he did not kill because they were kind, also admitting to the rapes of two boys. In 1993, no trace of the rapes of the other three girls was found in the police files. In May 2002, Dennis Waxon's trial began at a Curtis size in Nord and did it for the murders and rapes preceded by torture or acts of barbarity on Nigeria and Kathy and the rapes on the two boys and Wendy. Lawyer Jean provided the defense of the wax scene. Market experts described Waxon as a perverted egocentric whose sexualized hatred was from infancy. On May 31, 2002, Dennis Waxon was sentenced to life imprisonment with a 30-year lock-in period. He tried to appeal the decision on September 9, 2002. Dennis's trial for the rape and murder of Natalie began at Curtis Sizes of Norden because he was 17 years old. During these events, Sebastian de Garden was the lawyer for the Natalie family. In September 2002, Waxon was sentenced to 20 years in prison. He tried to appeal this decision as well. In 2003, Waxon appeal trial for the whore murder took place at Curtis Sizes Park to Calais in St. Omer. He was again sentenced to 20 years in prison. In 2003, Denny's Waxon appeal trial began at the party Calais Assize Court in St. Omer. He finally apologized for what he did. In November 2003, Dennis Waxon was sentenced to life with a 29-year lock-in period.